I am joined today by Amber P. Knight, who's going to talk about a program that we're hosting online uh, at the library. We'll be having it on Zoom and on our YouTube and Facebook channels. Uh, it's going to happen on Monday, June 22nd, starting at 7 o'clock. I hope you enjoy our conversation. I'm joined today by Amber P. Knight to talk about an upcoming program of how we can boost our mental health with technology. Amber, thanks so much for talking with me today. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. So you've been uh, doing pro programs for libraries and been doing, you know, you know, you know, just talking about mental health for some time, I know. And we're all using technology in ways we, you know, to, to like as core parts of our life that like it was integrated in our lives before everything kind of fell apart in March and like it's exploded since then. Let, let, let's back up a little bit pre pandemic though and talk about how you started getting interested in, in helping people learn about mental health. So I have lived experience. I have bipolar disorder and I've been in treatment with it for years. And uh, I eventually voluntarily went to a psychiatric hospital and it's one of the best decisions I ever made. And after, and that was eight years ago at this point. And after that, my life was just on an uptick and I learned a lot of coping mechanisms and uh, a lot of things that I realized when I started doing talks and putting my story together when I came, you know, when I was in a place of being stable, I was like, I'm noticing a trend. Like a lot of this stuff has to do with being online or my phone and technology and community building. And I was like, I need to put this together. And so I did. That's really awesome. That uh, just that, that, that you kind of, you said it so casually that you, you know, that you, <laughs> you, you survive and you're a survivor of bipolar disorder. And that it does, is that something that you discovered? Like, you know, is it just something that turned on and you realize, is it something that took you a while to realize? Um, um, I, I'm not trying to get too personal, but I just, that this, no, that's, you were just that's, so casual about that. That's, so. this, that's what this is about. Yeah. When you open like that, I'm definitely not going to bury the lead. Right. So uh, I don't know when it started exactly, because I was an angsty teenager. So I wore flannel and like Nirvana. And then I went to college and I started theater. Mm -hmm. So who knows if I was manic or depressed then because my emotions were everywhere for that. When I graduated college and was left to my own devices, my world kind of imploded and exploded at the same time. Mm -hmm. And just, I was on the bipolar roller coaster, as I know now between mania and depression yeah. and I went to a therapist because I studied to be a therapist uh, but went into acting instead so I had no shame about that and this As is, which is right I mean people should have no shame exactly. about seeking therapy mental health is just part of taking care of ourselves it's health. It's really important yes, part of your health yeah. and he said you're showing signs of bipolar disorder you should get diagnosed mm -hmm. by a psychiatrist so I, I immediately fired him <laughs> uh, because that was for crazy people uh, even though I was going to be a therapist, there was still that stigma. There's a line. And, That's right. Yeah. But I crashed enough that I was like, I got to do something. And I got diagnosed. And then ups and downs and ups and downs and eventually the hospital. Hmm. Wow. That's, I can't, like, I, I've had friends, I've talked to a number of people who've been hospitalized. It's got to be quite an experience. Um, so coming out and, and, and now living with it, I assume it's not something that just goes away. It's something that you have to manage. So, yeah. So are there, are there triggers? Is it something I, I, there's like, there's all sorts of ways of dealing with mental health challenges. There's talk therapy, there's drugs. Um, there's kind of just figuring out how to change your lifestyle and avoid triggers. Um, I assume it's all, you know, it's probably a combination of all these things yeah. that really works for you. Yeah. What works for me is medication. I have two therapists um, and I have a psychiatrist okay. and just basically anyone I deal with anyone, anyone that comes within a hundred miles of me who is, has to work with me, any, you know, specialist, medical specialist or anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen, I have bipolar disorder. We got to work around it yeah, because yeah. a specialist is a specialist. If all you have a hammer, uh, every problem's a nail. Right. Yeah, or yeah. anyhow. So yeah, no, exactly. I, it's like, that's yeah. the only tool you can use. Let's figure out, let's look at all the tools we have available. Yeah, exactly. So I, I tell them right away and it's amazing 
how many times I could have been helped if I just had more agency, if I knew how to self advocate. Mm. And so um, eventually, I you know, realized I can choose my own therapist, I don't have to stay with someone I don't click with. And I can Mm. Uh, refuse meds if I want to. Turns out that was a bad idea, but still it's my option. And if I don't like the side effects, I can ask about other ones. And just that there's a world of things that are there to help you. Um, And I just happen to be lucky enough to know how to advocate for myself now. It sounds like an incredible journey that you've been on and continue Mm -hmm. to be on. But I, I like, that's awesome that you've been able to figure out and know this about yourself and find such a supportive community. Uh, I'm yeah. really glad to know that we live in a place where that you can find that kind of community. Cause I know that there's a lot of people who feel really isolated. It's really scary. As, as we kind of pivot from thinking about pivot health, uh, mental health to thinking about technology, I start thinking about representations of people with mental health. I wonder like, because there's so many different ways that people with mental health challenges have been portrayed in media. Are there portrayals that actually speak to your experience? I mean, it's not all, you know, United States of Terra and like, you know, awesome acting, but like, I'm not sure what this actually says about yeah. the experience of, of, you know, living with um, whatever she was living with in that. In that. I don't know if yeah. you watched that series. Uh, yeah. Um, dissociative personality. Disorder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Formerly known as split personality. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. So for me, and I only saw one season of this show, so I don't know what happened. For me, the most uh, uh, relatable for me, I don't know if it's realistic for other people, Mm -hmm. is actually the show Homeland. Okay, yeah, no, I thought the way that... um that that was portrayed in that was really intense. I really like, yeah, yeah, I've I've seen a few of those seasons of Homeland. That's interesting that that spoke to you, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've hunted far fewer terrorists (laughs) <laughs> but just the way she was when she was manic and it oh. just felt for me it wasn't cartoonish even though people oh. watching it might be like oh my goodness calm it down but it's like i got it but it was real like, that's how it turns it. on sometimes yeah. yeah and i saw yeah. how it manifested how she channeled you know her energy into things and yeah. when things went off the rails for her and i got it and like oh. i said i don't know what happened in later seasons but uh it definitely oh. resonated with me so if um, you know people who come into our program are going to learn about how they can use technology, they don't have to have lived with bipolar. They may yeah. be living with bipolar, may be living with other it's things. But it, exactly, and and it, it's something that we can all relate to and figure out. There are days when we're on roller coasters, and hopefully yeah. we can modulate the, the 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 peaks and the lows. But we're still all on on roller coasters these days. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. There's two parts of this presentation. Yeah. There's having a positive experience uh, with technology and there's having a avoiding negative experiences mm-hmm. or, or b- balancing and having a choice. Because one of the elephants in the room for me is I'm like, be happy online and be happy with your life. Right. Yeah. And there's like wave to uh, civil rights movement happening. So it's like I was torn between how that how I would come to terms with that. And basically what it comes down to is choice. Yeah. You, you should have the choice in how much and when you take things in, because we need certain conversations. We need a lot of stuff. We also need healthy people who are not inundated by, uh, it can be, it's so pervasive. You have the right to choose. And so I talk about ways that you have options. And so mm-hmm. again, having a positive experience and avoiding a negative experience are definitely not the same thing. And I think that mm-hmm. having both of those is really important. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I've seen some, some articles recently that have said, you know, we all experience kind of, or, and not everyone, I'm sure, but uh, a lot of people experienced a, in a kind of explosion of Zoom social events. And it's like, oh, there's going to be a happy hour here. There's going to be this and we're all going to be doing it. And there's no excuse because you're at home. So you have to be on your screen all the time. Yeah. And it's like, all right, it's, you know, sometimes with the right people, that can be an awesome experience. But even with good friends, um, it, there can be times when you just need some space and good friends will say, yeah, you don't have to join. It's it, this is all like, you know, I want to take care of you. But other folks like, you know, when you don't have that and there's just this like social pressure, especially for people that are introverted can have a really hard time with like, in some ways our homes have been opened up in ways that they never were. Yeah. And curating, I think sometimes our, our social connections so that we have that choice and we're friends with people who you know, support that choice is really important. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely managing managing yeah. people's expectations. Are there 
any tools that you would recommend? I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, of tips and ways yeah. to, to exercise that choice. But if you had to suggest just like one thing today uh, until people can join us for this program, um, are there is, you know, what would you like people to take away thinking about okay. how they can help support choosing and making healthy okay. choices? I will pick one okay. um, that's relevant and it has to do with your search history. And I know mm. like, there are going to be some obvious things and then some more nuanced things. So the obvious thing that some people do is just clear their whole search history um, for many different reasons why people want their history. But um, the internet follows you and there'll be times when you don't want to, if you're doing research, you know, whatever reason, you just don't want to do that. But since the internet follows you, you can minimize that. So if you right now want to be more informed and know about things that are going on, or if it's something like, what does this weird mole look like? Mm. Then for the rest of your life, you're going to get weird mole cures and stuff like that. <laughs> or in more serious cases, just the types of story and being inundated by things that are hard for you. So I have three tips. One, search in incognito mode. Mm. Find the information you want to know from a trusted source and do it in incognito or it'll mm. follow you. The other thing is the same thing with YouTube. Um, you can search, you could either do it in incognito mode or do it um, and delete your search history within. Okay, so let's say, let me put this better. I'll do it better on the day of. Oh, let's okay. say you, you look up baking recipes a lot. Well, mm -hmm. you're going to have a history full of baking things. And, and it suggests <laughs> lots of baking recipes for you to watch. Yeah. Exactly. But if you put in there weird mole then you're gonna get baking and weird mold. And so, you don't wanna see a lot of weird mold videos. Exactly, so yeah. you don't wanna wipe your whole history. You do want to build a profile. I want okay. to build a profile mm -hmm. so that I can see the you know animal sanctuaries that I wanna see, but yes. I don't wanna see Tiger King. So okay. it's like this balance of finding what you want. So if you're very curious about Tiger King, then you can go in and only delete the Tiger King, delete it from what you viewed and delete it from your search so that you can build a kind of world where you get more of what you love and what builds you up. That makes sense. It's like gardening. You know, you want to yeah. plant the flowers that you want to look at and you take out the weeds. So sometimes we have to research the weeds so we know what to take out, but you, you don't want to be looking at them all the time. That's why you're taking them out. Exactly. And if you see yeah. a video you don't like, then that they put up in your, shows up in your algorithm, mm -hmm. go to do not show this or mm -hmm. Um, do you not show me this channel? And again, it's just... Give it the feedback cool. saying, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, there's even an incognito mode I know in YouTube where you can actually just... So if you're like, okay, I'm going to go do some research right now and I don't want this to be, in, you know, poisoning my, my, my exactly. cultivated garden of videos, you know, don't, don't use this content. Yeah, that, that, yeah, those are really good tips. Well, thank you, Amber. That, I think that's something... Those are a couple of really simple things that people can do uh, as they move forward, hopefully they'll, they'll keep this video and they will be very excited to join us and learn a lot more about how they can boost their mental health and, and use some, some tools to do it. One of the two, like, it, it's a little like cliche and, and everything, but uh, I remember when I first got, there was like, you know, I don't know, I'm of a time when I remember life before cell phones. Um, and so there was, you know, once upon a time, you wondered, do I get a cell phone? Do I not get a cell phone? And, and like, you know, like people with cell phones are always looking at their cell phones. They're always taking calls and they're reachable everywhere. And how annoying is that? And I was like, you got to be, when you get a tool, you have to use it as your tool, not be a tool for it. Um, yeah. You know, because you can definitely be a tool. You can be, how do we put technology to work for us instead of what exactly. for it? And it's, uh, I also go into a part about, you know, low tech things and about helping mm -hmm. other people to be a part of communities and what sparked it. I'm not religious, but my mom is. And I was like, well, what if people, like people who aren't going to church but don't have technology, what are they doing? And it got me thinking. And so it doesn't have to be with church and it doesn't have to be uh, with anything like that. But you might have somebody who feels isolated but wants ways to be a part of things or money is an issue. And so I go over some things like that where you can support people and communicate with them so that you're both, uh, both healthy mentally. The the power of the old fashioned phone tree and connected and building you know building communities using the technology we got available. Right mm -hmm. on, Amber. I'm really excited. Thank you for yeah. for coming to Quincy to help share your your knowledge and your experiences with us. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking Absolutely. forward to it. Absolutely. I'm so glad you that uh, I get this opportunity. It'll rock. <laughs>